Hello there again. Thank you for coming back. And if you're joining me for the first time, this is Lily's Viking Adventure, where I read ASMR and history, scholarly articles, things like that, to help you go to sleep. So if you're joining me and you're enjoying the content, please give me a like, subscribe, share if you know people that might like it. That really helps my channel to grow, helps me to keep, keep going on. And so I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, today, I have some information on Sigurd the Stout. Now, I would like to qualify this, as I do with all my Wikipedia articles, that it is from Wikipedia. I know a lot of people don't like that. The reason that I do sometimes is because I really want to get a lot more information to you. And Wikipedia, especially for these, has more information. And it's all cited. And any disputes about the information can be seen in the Wikipedia article itself. So you can kind of know. And most of the ones that I am taking are older articles that have the corrections have already been made. So I do occasionally read from Wikipedia and this is a Wikipedia article. So let's get started. Sigurd the Stout. Uh, for the Earl of Northumbria, also called Sigurd the Stout, Seward, Earl of Northumbria, Sigurd Holverson, Earl of Orkney. The title was held from 991 to 1014. His predecessor was Holvier Thorverson, successor uh, Sigurdsson, Brucey Sumerolidi, and Ianar Sigurdsson. Native name Sigurd Digri, Sigurd the Stout. He died on the 23rd of April, 1014. He is known for the Battle of Clontarf. Noble family was uh, Norse Earls of Orkney, spouse Olaf, daughter of Malcolm II of Scotland. Issue was Hund, Bursi, Somerlidi, Ianar, and Thorfinn. Father was Holvard Thorfinnson, mother Ethne. Sigurd Holvardson, uh, 960 to 10 to April 1014 popularly known as Sigurd the Stout, from the Old Norse Sigurd Digrdi, was an Earl of Orkney. The main sources for his life are the Norse sagas, which were first written down some two centuries or more after his death. These engaging stories must therefore be treated with caution rather than as reliable historical documents. Sigurd was the son of Holdivir Thorfinnsson, and according to the Norse sagas, a direct descendant or of Thorf Ianar Ragvaldsson. Sigurd's tenure was as Earl was apparently free of the kin strife that beset some other incumbents of this title, and he was able to pursue his military ambitions over a wide area. He also held lands in the north of mainland Scotland and in Sudroyer. And he may have been instrumental in the defeat of Godfrey Mac Aralt, King of the Isles. The Annals of Ulster record his death at the Battle of Clontarf in 1014, the earliest known reference to the Earldom of Orkney. The saga tales draw attention to Sigurd's conversion to Christianity and his use of totemic raven banner, a symbol of the Norse god Odin. This ambiguous theme and the lack of detailed contemporary records of his life have led to a variety of interpretations of the saga material by modern scholars. Sources. The sources for Sigurd's life are almost exclusively Norse sagas, none of which were written down at the time of the events they record. The Orkneyinga saga was first compiled in Iceland in the late 13th century. 
and much of the information it contains is hard to corroborate. Sigurd also appears briefly in St. Olaf's saga, as incorporated into the Heimskrilga, Skrigla, and in Erbigya saga. Sorry for the pronunciations. I don't have a second language. There are various tales about his exploits in the more fanciful Njal saga, as well as the saga of Gunlogr, Serpent Tongue, Thorstein Sidu Halsen saga, and the Vatsdela saga, uh, and the tale of Helgi and the Wolf in the Flatier Jarbrock. Family background. The Orkninga saga reports that Sigurd was the son of Holdvir, one of the five sons of Thorf and Skull Splitter, and Ethni. She is said to be a daughter of King Gjalvar, the period after Earl Thorfinn's death was one of dynastic strife. Three of Earl Holdvieter's brothers ruled before him, although he died in his bed before being succeeded by Sigurd, probably in the 980s. Sigurd's patrium, tra, patronomic is an unusual one, and there would appear to be a connection with this name and the early roots of the modern French name Louis. Rule. Cool. Sigurd was in the fortunate position that on his succession to the earldom, there seems to have been no other serious contenders. In this respect, his rule was unlike that of the earlier generation of the sons of Earl Thorfinn, and of the next generation in that it avoided the bitter feuding that beset the earldom during both of those periods. Sigurd's great-grandfather, Thor Ionar, lost the Udall rights of the Orkney and Shetland farmers as part of the, a deal he brokered with the Norwegian crown. These rights were restored by Sigurd. The Beret hoard of silver ring money has been dated to the period of 997 to 1010 during Earl Sigurd's reign. Mainland Scotland, excerpt from Njal Saga in the Mold Mo Vral Vala Bach, circa 1350. Sigurd's domain included not just Orkney itself, but also Shetland, which formed part of the earldom and also extensive lands on mainland Scotland. For the latter, his overlords were the kings of Scotland rather than Norway. The extent of these mainland dominions is uncertain. According to the rather dubious source, Njal's saga, they included Ross, Moray, Sutherland, and the Dales. At the time, Moray would have been included districts on the west coast, including Lochaber. Smith notes, 1984 notes the density of dollar place names on Scotland's west coast, and it has even been suggested that the Dales is a reference to Dol Dalriada, although it is more likely that it means Caithness. During Sigurd's tenure, the earldom approached its high point, and his influence was perhaps only exceeded by that of his son, Thorfinn. Sigurd's uncle, uncle Liot, had been killed in war against the Scots, and Sigurd soon faced trouble from his southern neighbors. According to the Orkninga saga, Earl Finlick, Findelik of Moray led an army against him, which outnumbered Sigurd's forces by seven to one. The saga then records Sigurd's mother's, mother's reply when he went to her for advice. Had I thought you might live forever, I'd have reared you in my wool basket. But <laughs> you've got to love the women in the Viking times. You have to love them. But lifetimes are shaped by what will be, not by where you are. Now take this banner. I've made it for you with all the skill I have. And my belief is this. If you will bring victory to the man it's carried before, put death to the one who carries it. The raven banner worked just as Sigurd's mother said. 
He was victorious, but three standard bearers in succession were killed. A battle was fought between, between Norwegian forces and Malcolm II of Scotland at Mortlock, uh, 1005, which may have involved or been led by Sigurd. Although victory went to the Scots, the Norwegians had clearly spent some considerable time encamped in Marais and came equipped with a large fleet. However, Orcadian influence in this part of Scotland is likely to have been temporary, and on other occasions, such as during his uncle Yacht's earldom, Scottish forces had pushed north into Caithness, the Hebrides. St. Martin's Cross on Iona dates from about 800 AD and would have been a landmark when Earl Sigurd ruled the Hebrides. Sigurd the Stout also took control of the Hebrides and placed a jarl called Gilly in charge. Njal's saga records that an expedition that took place in 980, in which Kerry, Sigurd's bodyguard, plundered the Hebrides, Kintyre, and Bretland, probably Strathclyde. On another occasion, Kerry sailed through the Min Minch in order to collect tribute from Gilly, whose base may have been either Colonsay or Col. The Annals of Ulster record a raid by the Danes on Iona on Christmas night in which the abbot and 15 of the elders of the monastery were slaughtered. And this may have been connected with the successful conquering of the Isle of Man by Sigurd and Gilly between 985 and 989. Njal's saga records a victory for Sigurd over Gofraid Mac Arelt, Arelt, king of the Isles, with the former returning to Orkney with the spoils. The contemporary annals of Ulster record a similar event in 987, although with the reverse outcome. Here it is claimed that 1,000 Norsemen were killed, among them the Danes who had plundered Iona. Two years later, Niall's saga reports a second campaign in the southern Hebrides, Anglesey, Kintyre, Wales, and a more decisive victory in Man. Irish sources report only the death of King Gofried in Dalriada, an event that Thompson, 2008, ascribes to Earl Gilly's Gal Gehadiel forces. Imbrigia saga records the payment of silver tribute from man to Sigurd. And although this is a rather unreliable source, there is corroboration of such an event occurring in 989 in a Welsh source, with payment being made of a penny each from the local population to the black host of the Vikings. It has been suggested that the much later use of ounce land and penny land assessments in the Geth Hill Touch, <laughs> I can't even pronounce that one, I'm sorry, may date from the time of Earl Sigurd and his sons. By 10,004, the Western Isles, independence from Orkney, had been reasserted under Ragnall MacGofraid, who died in that year. It is possible the rules overlapped with Gilly's zone of influence to the north and Ragnall's to the south. On Ragnall's death, Sigurd reasserted control, which he held until his own death a decade after, after which the islands may have been held by Hakan Eriksson. Religion a group of warriors in medieval garb surrounded two men whose postures suggest they are about to embrace. The man on the right is taller, has long, fair hair, and wears a bright red tunic. The man on the left is balding with short, gray hair and a white beard. He wears a long brown cloak. Oh, King Olaf Tryggvason of Norway, who is said to have forcibly Christianized Orkney, uh, according to the Orkninga saga, the Northern Isles were Christianized by King Olaf Tryggvason in 995, when he stopped at South Walls on his way back to Norway from Dublin. The king summoned Jar Jarl Sigurd and said, I order you and all your subjects to be baptized. If you refuse, I'll have you killed on the spot, and I swear I will ravage every island with fire and steel. Unsurprisingly, Sigurd agreed, and the islands became Christian at a stroke. This tale is repeated in St. Olaf's saga, although here Olaf lands at South Ronaldsay. 
as is a brief, a brief mention of Sigurd's son, Hund or Welp, who was taken as a hostage to Norway by King Olaf. Hund was held there for several years before dying there. After his death, Earl Sigurd showed no obedience or fealty to King Olaf. Death and Succession Battle of Clontarf the Orkinga saga blandly reports that five years after the Battle of Svolder, Earl Sigurd went to Ireland to support Sigtrig Silkbeard, and after taking up the Raven Banner, was killed in a battle that took place on Good Friday. The chronology is slightly awry in that Sigurd's death is known to have taken place 14 years after Svolder. Njal saga provides a little more detail, alleging that Gorm Flaith, Ingen Merchata prompted her son Sigtrig into getting Sigurd to fight against her former husband, Brian Boru. She sent him to Earl Sigurd to beg for help. Then King Sigtrig fared south to Ireland and told his mother that the Earl had undertaken to come. The 12th century Irish source, the Cogd Gaedhil Regalbe, records the events of the Battle of Clontarf in 1014. The foreigners and the Leinstermen were led by Broder of the Isle of Man and Sig Sigurd, and the battle lasted all day. Though Brian was killed in the battle, the Irishmen ultimately drove back their enemies into the sea, and Sigurd himself was killed. His death is corroborated by the Annals of Ulster, which record that amongst the dead, was Sutred, son of Ludur, Ayarla in Sea Orc, of son of Sigurd, son of Holdvir, Hol Earl of Orkney. This is the earliest known contemporary reference to the earldom of Orkney. Sigurd left four sons, Brusi, Sumaralidi, Inar, and Thorfinn, each of whom would also bear the title Earl of Orkney, the lands were initially divided amongst the three older brothers, Thorfinn being only five years old at the time. Thorfinn's mother is specifically stated to be the daughter of Malcolm II, the Norseman's foe at Mortlock. Njal's saga provides the names of various other relatives of Sigurds. Havard, who was killed at Thraswick, the modern Fren Freswick in Caithness, is referred to as his brother-in-law, Sigurd is said to have given his sister Nerida, also called Swanlaga, in marriage to Earl Gilly. Issue. Sigurd is believed to have married twice. The name of his first wife is not recorded. However, she is the mother of his four oldest sons. Simurlidi, jointly Earl of Orkney with his brothers Brucey and Ianar from 1014 until his death in 1018, Brucey jointly Earl of Orkney with his brothers Simrlidi and Ianar from 1014 to 1018 and Ianar until 1020. Ianar jointly Earl of Orkney with his brothers Simrlidi and Brucey from 1014 to 1018 and Brucey until his own death in 1020. Hund predeceased his father, taken as hostage in 995 by King Olaf of Norway, died several year, years later while in Olaf's custody. Sigurd married second, Olaf, youngest daughter of Malcolm II of Scotland. Together they had one son, Thorfinn, Earl of Orkney, by, born 1009 and died 1065. Interpretations. Sigurd's earldom exerted a magnetic attraction for high-born Icelanders and inspired many tales of military prowess in their own family sagas. Detail from the Bayou Tapestry, showing a Norman knight carrying what appears to be a raven banner. King Jarfaller, Sigurd's supposed grandfather, appears as Jarfaller Arakunungar in Lanamabrak, and has been identified as Sirbal Mac Dunling, king of Osrage, who died in 888. There is clearly a chronological problem with Sigurd's mother, being the daughter of a king who died more than 70 years before the death of his own grandfather, Earl Thorfinn. Furthermore, Thorstein the Red, Olafson, 
late ninth century and hold beater old beater's great grandfather was apparently married to a granddaughter of Kjarvalar. Wolf 2007 concludes that the saga writers may have confused this story about the provenance of Sigurd Holvertsen with one about Thorstein, a close ally of Sigurd Eysteinsson. Drawing on Adam of Bremen's assertion that Orkney was not conquered until the time of Harald Haldrada, who ruled Norway from 1043 to 1066, Wolf 2007, speculates that Sigurd may have been the first Earl of Orkney. He also offers the hypothesis that the earldom was a created was created by the Danish king Harold Bluetooth circa 980, rather than in the time of Harold Fairhair 100 years earlier. He concludes that there were no earls in Orkney before Sigurd's time. It might help to explain the island's low profile in the annals, since these, for the most part, record only the deaths of great men. However, the absence of comment on this subject by Irish, Irish sources prior to Sigurd's death there is hardly surprising. Irish sources of the period were not well informed about and not much concerned with Orkney. Smith, 1984, is more sympathetic to the claims of the sagas and argues that Thorfianar may be regarded as the first historical Earl of Orkney. The Scar Boat Burial Plaque found on the Isle of Sande. The conflict between Sigurd and Olaf Tryggvason probably predates their chance meeting at Kirkhope, as the latter is known to have been raiding in Sudrayar during the period 991 to 994. His motives for a determined pursuit of Christian obedience are likely to have been essentially political rather than religious. His journey back to Norway was in order to bid for the kingship there and securing a passive Orkney in advance of this was therefore greatly to his advantage. Although Sigurd's marriage to an unnamed daughter of Malcolm of Scotland is mentioned in the Orkninga saga immediately after the death of Hund and the Earl's consequent break with Olaf's Trig Trigvason, Thompson, 2008, views this nuptial arrangement as a joint attempt by the Orcadians and the Scots to align themselves against the common threat from Moray, rather than a, as a slight to Norway. When the sagas were written down, Orkney had been Christian for 200 years or more, and the conversion tale itself is blatantly unhistorical. When the Norse arrived, in the Northern Isles, they would have found organized Christianity already thriving there, although there is no mention of this at all in the sagas. Furthermore, the Norse dragon motif of the whalebone plaque found at the scar boat burial was found in conjunction with the grave of an elderly woman who had died by 950 AD at the latest. And the weight of the archaeological evidence suggests that Christian burial was widespread in Orkney by Sigurd's time. The intention may have been to disown the influence of indigenous elements of Orcadian and Shetland culture and emphasize that positive culture, cultural developments came from Scandinavia, whilst at the same time critiquing the unduly blunt method of Norwegian interference in this case. The inclusion of the tale of the Raven Banner in the saga material may convey the idea of a revival of heathenism in Orcadian society and a reaction to Norwegian attempts to control the islands. However, in the Orkinga saga, there is a vivid contrast between Sigurd's death clutching the raven banner and the later career of his son, Thorfinn, who is credited with several achievements in bringing Orkney into mainstream Christendom. Taken as a whole, the intention may be to draw attention to this transition. That's it for this article. I hope that you learned something new. Please toss me a like, and I will see you next time. Thank you.